Let's use the new ideal op-amp approximations that we learned to solve um, a circuit that contains an op-amp. So, suppose we have an op-amp in this orientation. Let's let the inverting terminal be on top and the non-inverting input be on the bottom. And then here is our V out. Suppose we have a feedback loop and in the feedback loop we have a feedback resistor of value 8k ohms and then let's say that there is a resistor attached to the input here let's let this be 3k ohms and then attached to this non-inverting input let's say we give it a voltage source so this V in here let's let this be 3 volts and then on the bottom here I'm just gonna have this bottom line be our ground so I'll indicate it with this ground symbol. And then these two terminals here, this is where we're going to measure our V out. So remember, in our um, schematics, it's not always drawn the, um, the values for VCC and minus VCC, because these are just the power inputs that turn the op amp on. It's not actually a signal that gets multiplied. That signal that gets multiplied and amplified is coming in here at these inputs. Okay, great, so um, the new approximations that we just learned, the ideal op-amp approximations are that um, the current coming into one input is equal to the current coming into the other input, and they're both equal to zero. And the other one is that the voltage um, coming into both inputs are equal to each other. Okay, so if I label this my input A and my input B, then I know that if I have a node here, then this current coming into input A, I can label it right there as IA, and then the current coming in here to input B is IB, and then the voltage at this node is going to be VA, and the voltage here coming into the B input is my VB. So I hope you can see those labels okay. All right, so now we are ready to solve our first op-amp circuit in this module. So let me write out this solution for you. We have that VB is equal to what? Well, it's connected directly to this three volt source. So that means that VB is equal to three volts. And because of our ideal op-amp approximation, this implies that VA is also equal to 3 volts. Great, so then also we know that since no current enters into this input and no current enters into this input virtually, we have that IA is equal to IB is equal to 0. So we're going to use that when we are using node voltages. So let me label this current here, I'll call this I1 and then I1 is going to come to this node and split to IA and then I'll label this current that takes this branch as IF because it takes the feedback loop. So at node VA we have that I1 is equal to IA plus IF but since IA is equal to zero by the ideal op-amp approximation, we can say that actually all the current that takes the path up to this node is going to come up this branch here. Okay, great. So we have I1 is equal to IF. Now the next step if I'm using node voltages to solve this is um, I can replace current I1 with um, the voltage between this node and that node divided by the resistor between. So this is connected to ground. So this is just going to be 0 minus VA all over 3K. So that's the current coming here. This IF current, I can replace this with VA minus V out divided by the resistor between, which is 8K. So this is VA minus V out over 8k. Great. So then we just established because this IA is 0 that I1 is equal to IF so I get to set these two equal to each other. So this gives me negative VA over 3k 
is equal to VA minus V out over 8K. And then remember that um, we know already what VA is because since VB is equal to 3, that implies that VA is also equal to 3. So we can replace this VA with 3. This gives us negative 3 over 3K is equal to 3 minus V out over 8K. And now all I have to do is use arithmetic to solve for V out. So um, I can say that, let's say that 3K times 3 minus V out is equal to negative 8K times 3. And then um, I can basically cancel out this K. I, I can sort of replace it with times a thousand, right? So if I have a K on both sides of the equal sign, I can just basically cancel those out. And then this gives me 3 times 3 minus V out is equal to negative 8 times 3, which is negative 24. I can divide that by 3. 3 minus V out is equal to negative 8. So that means that um, negative V out is equal to negative 11. So V out is positive 11 volts. Okay, great. So we used the ideal op-amp approximations to figure out what the voltage drop is across V out, which goes from the output terminal to ground. And um, this is a function of the difference between, the voltage difference between these two. And um, since we have an input voltage of three, we could actually calculate the gain because we know V out here. So if our input V in was three volts and our output V out was equal to 11 volts, then that means that the gain which is defined as V out over V in would be 11 over 3. Okay, so let me know if you have questions about using these ideal op-amp approximations to solve um, an amplifier circuit like this. Um, in the next few videos, we're going to be doing more amplifier circuits, and let me know if you have questions.